All right, welcome to part two of our quick start. Um, if, if you've missed part one, we can highly recommend watching it. It's where we set up a workspace, a database, and put some data in there and queried it. Um, there's probably gonna be a link somewhere up here, or there's a link somewhere around. Maybe it's part of a playlist. We'd encourage starting at the beginning, otherwise this may not make sense. Still, if, if you insist not to, um, let's have a quick recap. What we've done is exactly that. We've created a database for to-do list app. We've added a table for a list of to-dos, um, and we've queried it, but that's cool, but now we want to actually build like an application um, using Next.js, React, and TypeScript. That's just my stack because I'm comfortable with it. If you're comfortable with Remix and JavaScript only, totally cool. Um, the point is to learn Zada, uh, not to you know nitpick about frameworks. So with that, um, let's continue where we left off. So we have this table of to-do items, make a video and such. Um, again, more context in the previous video if you missed it. Uh, and what we want to do is build an app. So let's just start at the beginning. Um, we'll make a folder called to do app. We'll CD into it. Um, and you know, usual suspects, npm init uh, default settings, right? And we'll npm install uh, react, react dom and next. And when those install, we'll npm install again, some dev dependencies. So we'll do TypeScript, types node and types uh, react. That looks good. Um, things look pretty good. So now let's open this and like just get something basic on the screen, right? So um, we'll make a new folder. We'll call it pages slash index.tsx. Um, and we'll do const index, you know, just a component, render some stuff. Uh, main, I don't know why I did head. Um, h1, my to do list, list. Um, and we'll do ul, li. We'll have one item here just for posterity. Um, needs a checkbox, so we'll do input type checkbox, uh, and we'll add a label to it. Um, okay, buy milk it is, uh, but maybe good for the planet. Okay, that looks great, and then we'll have this be the default export. Um, this is not vegan propaganda. Anyway, you'll notice that this is red. Um, it's red because Next.js hasn't configured it for us. So if we do npx next dev and start a dev server, it will create a tsconfig file for us and the red goes away. Um, fantastic. Uh, let's just fix this tsconfig. I think there's an issue here with module resolution. Let's just specify that it's node and now it's going to be fine. Um, cool. So it looks good. We have a dev server running. Let's take a look. Okay. Um, it looks nice, but it's just a bit not so pretty. Um, and you know, this is a database. API type of tutorial, but I, come on, like we can make it look a bit good. Let's see. Um, shout out, by the way, to Alberto Jimeno or Jimenete for, for recommending this. There's an amazing way to just make any MVP or minimum viable product look great. So let's use that. Um, we'll do mvp.css. Um, Andy Brewer, the author, thank you. Um, and we'll just paste this. In Next.js, if you add a head component to your page, then it just puts the stuff in a head tag, which is quite handy. So we'll do that, and now, ah, it's pretty. But it's still, look, it's still static. It's, it's just text. Let's connect this to Zeta and pull our to-dos from there, okay? And this is the exciting part, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the tooling that we've created um, to give us developer experience that we hope makes you really as happy as it makes us, okay? So um, to do that, what we'll do is we'll come here and we will Zeta auth well, actually, we won't. We need to install. I have Zada installed. Let's install it. npm install global zada.io slash cli. We need the Zada CLI. So we'll do this. And notice um, dash dash global is deprecated. You have to use dash dash location equals global. Um, fancy. Anyway, so we're installing the CLI. And once the CLI is installed, we'll have to tell it who we are. So we'll run Zada auth login. And now I've run this before. As you may have seen when, when, when I switched to this tab, but um, you probably haven't. So I'm going to get asked, you've done this before. Are you sure you want to overwrite it? You're probably not going to get asked that. Just go with it. Um, so let's do that. Zada auth login. And you know, it's already configured. Do you want to override it? Yes, I do. Um, so now we have a choice. Do we create a new API key by opening a browser or do we use an existing API key? Now, if you use an existing API key, you've probably created one. Um, somewhere. There's documentation for that here. Let me quickly detour and show you. Um, in the Zada app, there's go to docs prominently up here. So if you click on that, um, you'll have API keys and you can know how to create them and use them and so on. 
Um, this is our quick start. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to just create one using the browser. So we'll tap this first option and it's going to open a browser and we're going to have to give our API key a name. So we'll call it my to do app. Nice. We'll do that. Um, and when it creates the API key, when we're authenticated, it says, congratulations, you're all set. You may close this tab now. So we'll close the tab and this one. Um, and we're back. All set. You can now start using Zara. Phenomenal. Um, let's CD into the, into the um, to-do app that we just created. And now that Zara is installed and ready, I can use the Zara command from anywhere. This is really helpful. Um, and I'm authenticated and knows who I am and everything. It's really great. So let's get started with initializing this project. We'll do Zara in it. Um, and now that I'm authenticated, it knows me. So it knows that I have a single workspace and it's using this workspace by default, Acme Inc. Um, but it's like, do you want to select an existing database or create a new one? Um, I'm going to use my existing one. Um, do you want to use the code generator? I do um, because it honestly looks really cool. And we recommend using the code generator because it just makes everything a lot more predictable. So I'm going to say yes to this. Um, do you where do you want the output file to be? This is a Next.js project. And if you look at the directory structure, I don't really have a source folder. I have pages. So I'll just put it in like util slash sada.ts. Yes. Um, and now it's just going to generate some code. And now it's asking me for a development branch. Um, Zada is a branchable database. That means amazing things for safety, for predictability, for migration. It's just really cool. Uh, this is a quick start. We're not going to cover that. That is covered in the docs. Um, click go to docs and read that if you want. Um, but we're not covering it because this is a quick start and because um, at the time of recording, the, the branch migration merging functionality isn't yet available. Um, but circle back. We'll also update this when it is. Um, but let's move on. So I'm going to choose none here. Do you want to create a git ignore file and ignore the dot env? Yes, I do. Um, cool. We're all set. It says we're all set. And here's a list of helpful commands we can run. Excellent. Now, what did that actually do? If we come here, we'll see that we have a new .env file, which contains a Zada API key um, that we just gave the, the CLI. This will authenticate us with Zada automatically. We also have a util directory with Zada.ts. And this is a generated thing that has like our table name and columns and everything. We don't have to look at this, but this will help us query Zada in a very predictable way. Um, so let's do that. Let's query Zada. So if we go to pages index, what we're going to do is um, export, actually let's export under the default, export const get server side props. Um, it's an async function that returns uh, props just like this. Now, why are we using get server side props? We highly recommend querying Zada from a server side environment from an environment that is not exposed to your users because you need to send an authorization header with your API key. And if you do that from a browser, anybody can open the inspector and look at the network tab and like sniff a API key. And then, you know, you have security problems and it's a database. You really don't want to leak security, secure tokens like for a database. So whenever you're able, um, let's use get server side props or even get static props to queries out at build time, but let's not leak the API key. Okay. So that's why we're doing that. Um, so now let's use this uh, Zata client. So if we do const Zata, we do something like new Zata client. This is why we like TypeScript. We get offered a chance to import Zata client from util uh, Zata. That's the code generator's output. So yes, we instantiate that um, and we should be in business. So now look at this. I can, oof, even Copilot kind of knows what to do. So we'll do, it's not Zata.get to do's. Thankfully, we have TypeScript protecting us. It's Zata dot db dot items dot um, get many that's what we want and we'll return props are to do just like this um, this looks good so let's I mean let's we need to put them in the front end so what we we'll want to do is we get to do's in props so instead of this now we can iterate over props we can say items dot map Oop, what items dot map um, and then we'll do something like key is hmm Okay, items is red. I don't, why items is red because it cannot find the name because we're not passing it here. So we'll do something like this. Okay, um, but now we still have some red in our ledger because it doesn't know what I is. Um, so if I want to do like key is the items ID, I, I, I don't know what it is. Uh, we can fix that by specifying that this is a function component. Um, 
And now it says, hey, items doesn't exist on empty object. That's because function component is generic. And if you don't pass in a type of prop here, um, it just assumes an empty object. So if I do thing, for example, it's going to be inferred. So with that, let's define a type for props. And again, this is just type trip. You don't need to do this, but for posterity, what is it? So it's actually what we're returning from here. It's the return type of get server side props. So let's do that. Return type of type of get server side props. Okay. But that's still not true. That's because it's an async function. So it's the awaited return type of get server side props. Okay. That's still not true. Because notice props is in a key. So it's actually the props key. And now the only error is that items does not exist on type to do. It's actually true. It's to do's. Wow. Thank you, TypeScript. It's called to do's. So now look at this to do's. We'll make this T. And now we have all the autocompletion. So the key is T dot ID phenomenal. Um, this is only checked if T dot is done. And this label can actually become the label of T dot label phenomenal. Now notice we have an error. Uh, because get service, we killed our, well, get server side props hasn't been run. So to do is our empty. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to kill our dev server, restart it because we got a new env. So you'll see that now it's reading our new env with the Zara API key. And now if we reload, um, we have my to-do list, make a video. But how does this look with many different things? Let's use the CLI one more time and populate our list. So if we use the Zara CLI, we can run Zara random data. Okay. And this will insert 25 random records in our items table. So let's look now. Let's reload. Wow. Look at that. We have 25 to do it's coming straight from Zada. Um, that is how we query things from Zada in a nice type safe way. It's type safe because look, I, we, I can come here and I can maybe reference some nonsensical field and it's like, Oh, that, that doesn't exist. Um, it keeps us safe, it keeps us predictable, and it keeps us fast. All of this with just some dev tooling. This is part of how we're trying to create the best developer experience for databases um, in the market. Uh, so that's how we query data from Zara, but we can't really, like, if I, if I come here and try to check this, nothing happens. Um, we can read data, we can't update data. Let's explore that in the next video. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, feel free to join our Discord um, and chat with us whenever you want. And um, the next one's probably going to be up soon. So let's look at uploading, updating data in the next one. All right. Peace.